shown. They're not shown. So it's not really. Ugh. Wait a second. This doesn't confirm if they're alive or dead. Since we haven't met them, we can't get confirmation of this person's dead or alive status. When we met that same person in the last chapter after they died, um, it still showed them. It still showed them white, even though we saw their body. So. The fact that it's white does not mean that they're alive. Yeah. Okay, um, back to the game. So yeah, long story short, um, Soichi, Reika, um, Karin, and Gota are the only survivors right now. Alright, so I'm just gonna go over the last line just to make sure we're caught up when we get to the next one. The girl's mind screamed um, every time she recalled the number of those who've been sacrificed for her sister. And the more she did it, her mind, her mentality reached its its limit. Having been forced into such tension for a long time, and having not slept at all, um, she couldn't escape from the guilt that followed her. girl's healthy um, mind couldn't bear this situation. <laughs> the girl's laugh echoed off the walls. The girl was standing there, but she was nothing more than an empty shell at this point. The girl that had once resided there had gone off somewhere to parts unknown. Perhaps she would win this fight. There wasn't a large chance that the handcuffed pair could outrun could escape her. But even if she did that, the one who'd be returning home to her sister wouldn't be the real wouldn't be the original her. Just the empty shell of the girl who's standing here. Karen, Karen, your big sister will get the money and come back to you soon. In the end, who had she? Who had the girl killed? Her enemies, or herself? And would her sister be, um, be overjoyed by her return? The smoke settled down after a while, allowing her to see through the room. She carefully proceeded down the room while keeping an eye out for traps. She knew where her enemies had ran to. Past this room was another room. Then there was a dead end. In other words, they'd be rats in the bag. The reason why she'd been able to wait so patiently for the smoke to go is because she knew they had nowhere to run. Those two really are going to use the same trick over and over again, huh? What the girl saw when she went to the room deeper in was a completely empty room. There was a open um, ventilation grate there, and the air duct that connected to it. <laughs> Go ahead, run all you want. You won't escape, no matter what, anyway. The girl kept laughing. 
She doesn't seem the least bit bothered by the fact that giving her the slip. She just continued laughing as she was. <laughs> just a little more, Karin. Just a little more. Perhaps she was calmer in any because you know, she was pr trying to put off um, having to kill even more. Oh, hell, I think I misread that. Perhaps she was more relieved than anyone else um, that further shedding of blood on her part um, was put off for a little longer. Okay, now here we go. Okay, one second. Okay, back. Here we go. Those air ducts are disgusting no matter how many times we go through them. I'm just glad we're safe right now. Having escaped through the air ducts, Soichi and Raker are finally able to take a breather. Fortunately, it didn't seem like the girl had tried to follow them into the air ducts. She probably didn't have a map of the ducts like they did. Let's say we've bought ourselves about an hour with this, don't you? When did you say? Reika said that she checked her PDA. Without using the air ducts, one would have to take a very long detour in order to get to this block. Even though the girl knew where they were, um, it would take her about an hour to get here without using the air duct. We'll also have to get to a um, broadcast room before then. So what you thought as Rekha stared at her PDA. Oh, yeah. oh hold on, sorry. So what you thought as he watched Rekha staring at her PDA. Broadcast room, huh? They said that, but they thought it was probably being, um, wouldn't be any good to go there. Judging from the way the girl had been acting when they'd seen her up till now, um, he didn't think he'd listen to her even if they did res try using the speakers. Way of thinking is too soft. No, that's not right. I'm sure Reika knows all this as well as I do. And because she knows, that's precisely why she doesn't want to give up on me or the girl. That's why this is all she can do. Even though it looks foolish, even if it looked foolish, and didn't seem like the their odds were good, um, she'd lose sight of what she really should be protecting if she didn't do that. Reka knows what she should be protecting. Then what should I be protecting? What do I need? One second. Soichi gave Reka a serious um, gaze. 
her face was covered in um, dust and um, blood from wounds. Even so, her face looked beautiful to Soichi. He found her beautiful from the first time they'd met. But what he was feeling now was a little different. The Soichi of back then probably wouldn't have found the current Breaker so beautiful. At the end of the day, you're still yourself, Reika. Huh? Reika turned to Soichi. But it seems she hadn't really heard what he said. As she tilted her head in confusion and looked at him. Please listen to me, Reika. What is it, Soichi? Reika grinned. Remember what you asked me before? That if the reason that if the reason I was lit that if you had any part in the reason I was continuing to breathe even now. The racket and the memories that were imbued in it. That was all that motivated Soichi. Was that all that motivated Soichi? Reika had asked him that. Right. She looked back at Soichi and blushed a little. Oh, she still seemed a bit confused. She she looked up at Soichi. Right now, all I can think about is having coffee brewed by you. And how I want to have a woman as beautiful as you all to myself. She stared up at him blankly. Her face approached Soiji's a little. Can I believe that? If you can believe a man who'll say something, he'll just say the word beautiful like it's nothing. the kind of person who's, who's, who means exactly what he says. The man known as Soichi Mitsurugi is more of a pessimistic coward than that. Reika called out to Soichi in a teasing voice and gently wrapped her um, hands around his neck. I'm no match for you. I feel like I've come to understand you well in the three days we've spent here. Reika's cheeks then approached Soichi. Soichi caught a whiff of her gentle, of the gentle fragrance she emitted. No other man has made me as anxious as you. Sorry about that, Reika. I'm just kidding. I'm not worried anymore, because we're going we're going home together. He 
Yes. That's why, um, I want to, um, hold on a second. Okay, yes, that's why I want to bet on the most, um, effective method there is of us getting to that day together. And what would that be? Rekka smiled a bit and raised her chin a little. That's... So she brought his own face closer to hers. Right then, Rekka closed her eyes. Their faces approached and they kissed. It was right then that Soichi pulled the trigger. Uh -huh. Huh? At first, Rega didn't understand what had happened. She felt like her feelings had finally gone through to Soichi, so she'd been... So she'd been completely relaxed. What just happened? Rega's eyes widened, startled by the sound of the gunshot. She frantically looked around. And then she caught a glimpse of, um, smoke rising from the large caliber handgun Soichi held in his hand. Why? Reika unconsciously held out her right hand. Hold on a second. When she brought her hand closer to it, the barrel of the gun gave off heat. And it seemed like just touching it would burn her hand. Reika's eyes were then drawn to it. At her own right wrist. At the handcuff ring attached to it. The ring connected to the chain. It should have been connected to Soichi's left hand. However... What is this? But the chain was severed right where... Right, as a, right where I've met Soichi's wrist. None. Why? Reika tried to deny what she'd seen. No matter what, she couldn't accept it. This can't be! This... This can't be! Rekka frantically grabbed the, grabbed the severed chain. But it truly was severed. It was no lie or illusion. This was undeniable reality. Soichi! What's the meaning of this? Why did you do this? Reika turned to Soichi and yelled at him. She gripped the severed chain for hand. You just said you needed me. What? Was that a lie? All a lie? Reika. Soichi tried to calm the agitated Reika down, but she wouldn't stop. So in the end, this is how you betray me, is it? It's just like I thought from the start, wasn't it? You were all talk, weren't you? You don't care for me at all. Reika then fell to her knees covered her face and started crying. Reika, please listen to me. I'm 
前のいない場所へ帰ったって無意味もないじゃないの私はお前がいないとダメなのよ Going back on my own. Going back to a place without you me, means nothing to me. I, I'm no good without you. Reiko's tears dripped onto the dusty floor. Her tears fell one after another, forming small puddles. So why don't you understand? Don't you understand I love you? I do! Soichi grabbed Reika's shoulders. Liar, because, because with things like this, you're going to die for sure. We all know that for a fact. It's impossible. It's next to impossible to remove your collar with the remaining time left. You're planning on leaving me behind and dying. That's not true. It's much easier to remove the, the handcuffs than it is to capture that girl in one piece with us uh, still handcuffed. It had him in some sense of egotism that caused him, that motivated him to break the handcuffs. He determined that if they stayed handcuffed, then their chances of winning were next to none. The girl was, wasn't was listening to a thing Soichi or Reika said. She attacked them without here without a without word with that whenever she came across them. And she accurate and she knew exactly where they were. At the very least, she was armed with a large rifle. On this floor, you couldn't you probably couldn't obtain weapons weaker than that. Next to that, Soichi and Reiko were practically defenseless. They couldn't move freely handcuffed. As a result, they were the weapons they could use were limited. And whether it was attacking or defending, they would have to do it together. At this rate, Soichi believed they had no chance of... If they'd stayed like that, they had no chance of winning. Hold on a second. Okay, um, here we go. Um, 
They were completely exposed, and we'd have to go into straight-up battles up, able to land any sneak attacks. If they saved handcuffs, they oh, wouldn't be able to... They couldn't use guns, or at the very least... They wouldn't be a match for anyone who had a rifle, like that girl. So you couldn't come up with a way they could deal with that. That was why, um... But if they, but the, the handcuffs were removed, that'd be a different story. The two of them can move independently. And they had a chance of restraining the girl without resorting to projectiles. Of course, um, after that, you'd have to find a way to remove his collar without, well, that would not invoke the building's penalties. Either way, though, it seemed much easier than trying to restrain her while they were still handcuffed. Do you swear that on that racket? Reika wiped her tears. But she wouldn't, didn't stop crying. She was too shocked for that. I swear on the racket and you. Soichi was being completely sincere. And if it doesn't work out, can I die with you? Absolutely not. I'll def we'll definitely remove your collar. Even Soichi wanted to go home alive with Reika. That was why he'd chosen the, their greatest chance for victory. Even so, promise me. Promise me that we'll be together in life or death. Reika finally stopped crying. She wiped her eyes just one more time. Soichi held out his left hand to Reika. Left hand that had been, that had been, that had been connected to Reika's own hand for the last three days. We'll always be together, Reika. Reika took his, ha took his hand to her own right hand. You sure? I'll never let go of your hand. That's what we promised from the start, wasn't it? So what you'd always thought he'd die here. But he'd been able to abandon that um line of thinking after meeting Reika. He'd managed to meet someone who needed him. Okay. I believe it. Believe what? One second. I believe that I wouldn't know how to breathe without you. All right. And go ahead and take a deep breath. Soichi then made a cheap joke like he normally would. You're still able to talk like that even right now at the end of things. Soichi had also finally returned to his original self. That was a kiss sound effect, sorry. You idiot.
And so the two of them first took each other's hands without ha the handcuffs for the f without handcuffs. <laughs> the right up ahead to the left. Oh, also, um, I'm gonna save here first. Also, now that the handcuffs are removed, I'm thinking of going back to the um, full aspect ratio. Um, I just want to check if you're okay with that. If you want me to continue to stay in the original aspect ratio like I have for the rest of the route. While you're while I'm waiting on you guys for I'm just gonna take a quick drink break. Okay, um, I guess for now, I'll, just, I'll s I think I'll just, um, stick to the- go for the rest of this route in this aspect ratio. Then I'll think for the next route, I'll return to the original aspect- I mean, the full aspect- Not the full aspect ratio, the HD, um, aspect ratio. And then revert to showing the full thing for CGs. We'll see how that goes, and if we don't like it, we can always go back to this- the original aspect ratio. Anyway, I'm continuing now. Or up ahead to the left, huh? The girl walked quickly as she looked at her PDA. The handcuffed pair hadn't moved for a while. Are you preparing some kind of trap? Or are they planning to run into the air ducts, retreat into the air ducts again? Either way, they are running out of tricks. Um, the girl hastened towards where they were. <laughs> Just then, the three blips on the on the map began to move away from where Ray, from where the girl was approaching. They nosed me. But no matter how much you run, you'll never get away from me. The girl ran as she readied the rifle she'd been carrying the whole time. Hold on a second. Okay, um, got it. Um... So the handcuffed pair weren't heading towards a dead end. Um... They went a little bit further, then they arrived at a, um... Brown's hallway that went around once. So if she heads straight for the round hallway from where she was right now, um, 
and pin them at the entrance and they wouldn't be able to escape. Then she could take her time thinking about how she would deal with them. <laughs> or they plan on running into the air duct again. They think they can survive like that? The girl laughed. Right now she had um a map of the air ducts had been added to her PDA. She found it on the way here. That so even if they retreat back in the air ducts, she she could catch them without a fail this time. The girl laughed as she looked at a um, ventilation um, grate um, right up ahead of her in the hallway. They've retreated there, but this will be the end. Not only was the girl smaller than them, but the two of them were handcuffed. they moved in the air ducts, then the girl would be far faster than them. In fact, if they did retreat into the air ducts, she'd be able to end this much quicker. <laughs> then, right then, just as she, um... As the girl followed the blips and, um, went right under the ventilation grate. Familiar smoke grenade blinded her in the front. It come from the crossroads up ahead. So the two... So the pank of pair had thrown it. <laughs> Gotta learn when to give up at some point. But still, they have more smoke screens left, huh? She was right at the entrance to the um, circular hallway. It wouldn't kill her to stand around for a little bit. She had them pinned down after all. They had nowhere to run. If they re if they took this time to retrieve the air duct, that'd be fine for her too. That'd make things easier for her. So That's why, um, when the um ventilation grate um hold on a second okay that's why when the ventilation grate was kicked down and a, and a young man emerged from it um the girl couldn't evade him good got it the girl had been completely focusing on what was ahead of her He'd been nervous when the girl had been looking at the... I looked at the ventilation grate earlier. But it seems she hadn't noticed that Soichi was in there. The hallway is blocked off by the um, smoke grenade Reika had thrown. Which had served not only to stop the girl in her tracks, but also to divert her attention. Reika, you're the best. It was Reika who'd come up with this plan. They would split into two. One of them would take all the PDAs and distract the girl, while the other would capture her. And if they used the hallway, 
and the final um, smoke grenade right. They could stop her in their tracks and catch her then. It would have been a considerably dangerous plan if, um, if the girl hadn't been tracking them with any other way than used than their current position in the PDAs. But fortunately, things went just as they predicted. Now! The girl was completely convinced that Soichi and Reiko were past the smoke screen. Everything had gone exactly as Reiko had planned. They had only one shot at this. If they failed now, they wouldn't get another chance. Reika, uh, sorry, Soichi kicked the the ventilation grate from within, from inside the air duct. The girl froze up at that moment, but she wasn't able to turn around Soichi in time. Yeah. Soichi lunged directly at the girl from the air duct. Frozen surprise, she wasn't able to avoid him. <laughs> Surprised by the body slam that come from an unexpected direction. The girl instinctively pulled the trigger of her rifle. But without target, the bullets just hit the wall without hitting anyone. She, the girl was slammed into the wall right after that, and she dropped the rifle. Two of them then lost their balance and fell to the floor together in a struggle. Now! So she was a bit relieved to see things going as they planned. He imagined over and over getting shot by that rifle when he lunged at her. So when she dropped it, he felt so relieved he could he could cry. How did you? When the girl realized that it was Soichi who launched that surprise attack on her, um, she um, shouted at Soichi as she desperately grappled him and tried to push him away. Do you think we were still handcuffed? So she grappled at the girl and managed to, um, and tried to keep her still. But in her, um, struggle, she was surprisingly tough, so she wouldn't go down that easily. Damn it! I didn't expect you to take off your handcuffs at this- at this time. When she realized she had to push Soichi off of her, the girl quickly switched her strategy and reached for the um, pistol um, at her at behind at behind her waist. Shit! So she re noticed that the girl was going for her pistol, but in the end was too late to stop her from pulling it out. This is it. The girl trying to point the the muzzle at Soichi. Soichi tried to pin down her right desperately tried to pin down her right hand so she couldn't.
Once he saw that um, Soyce's attention was on the pistol, um, the girl kicked Soichi in the side. Ugh. Soichi lost some of his strength at that moment in his arms. Seeing her chance, the girl pointed the gun's muzzle at Soichi's head. Shit! Soichi endured the dull pain in his abdomen as he frankly twisted his um, head as he as he put his strength into repressing the girl's right hand again. Right then, she, she pulled the trigger. Ugh. Fortunately, the bolt in hit Soichi. It merely grazed his neck and flew off. Damn you! Soichi felt pain in his neck at the time, but his strength didn't fail him. This didn't leave him this time. Crap! Did it leave a, did it leave a deep wound? His neck throbbed heavily. Soichi couldn't check because he was in the middle of a hand-to-hand -hand combat. But it seemed from judging from the pain that the wound wasn't as light as he initially expected. If I don't hurry, then Reiko will. If the girl managed to shake him off, she'd go off. She'd go after Reika next for sure. He couldn't let it happen. Stop already! This won't make your sister happy. What do you know? You don't know anything about how much we've suffered. Soichi pushed back against the gun and falls pistol of all's might. He couldn't let her shoot over and over again at this distance. He wouldn't get lucky again. If she fired next, it'd be a direct hit for sure. <laughs> No one helped us. They just used us. Everyone around me was an enemy. They offered all they did was offer empty condolences. The girl couldn't turn back either. To the to her, this was the only way she could save her sister. I'll give you all my prize money. So listen to me, will you? <laughs> Shut up. I don't need your help. I'll save Karin. I'm telling you that we're trying to help you. We don't have any reason to fight now, do we? The gun between the pistol between Soichi and the girl pointing upwards. The girl wanted to point the gun at Soichi while Soichi was trying to take the gun from her. Look, its muzzle swayed between the two of them. Shut up! Stop! Shut up, shut up. It's too late for any of that. The girl's grip grew stronger. If 
that's true, then why didn't you appear before us sooner? She screamed in sync with the second gunshot. The girl went completely limp. The pistol fell out of her hand and and clanged to the and sorry, and fell to the floor with a loud metallic clank echoing around. Huh what, what just happened? Soichi sat up as he as he put his hand against the wound on his neck. He could tell he was bleeding a lot um from his neck. But then but any thoughts of that immediately faded away. No. Soichi was rendered speechless by the sight before him. The girl lay limply on the ground with fresh red blood pouring from her chest, no stain her in her chest. The same thing was happening out her back too. Unaware that she was bleeding out from both sides, the area around her grew thick with red blood. The bullet fired while Soichi and the girl had been struggling had pierced right through the girl's body. girl dragged her body as she desperately looked around her. Where's my gun? The girl looked for the gun she dropped. It was lying right next to her, but she did but she showed no signs of noticing that. She can't see anymore, can she? Once she realized that she wouldn't find the call in a second. Once she didn't find the gun, she started searching around her next. Girl tried to lift her body up, but it collapsed right into the ground again. Reika run ran in at that moment. Sorry, she having that girl. <gasps> Sorry, she was bleeding out of his neck, while the girl's chest was being stained with blood on the ground. Rake understood the situation of a glance and held up the girl lying on the ground. She didn't care that she was getting stained with her blood. 
Don't die. You have to live. You were going to go back to your sister, weren't you? Reika, it's... it's too... Sister... As she was going limp, the girl started moving again in reaction to Reika saying the word sister. As she lay in Reika's arms, the girl reached out her hand, seeking her own sister. It seems she didn't realize that Reika was right by her. The girl started emitting a sound like a broken flute from her throat. Perhaps one of her lungs had been pierced. Soichi pitied the girl. He completely forgotten that they, she tried to kill them multiple times. That shows a testament to how deep her love for her sister went. She's prepared to do anything if it meant saving her sister. And once she killed, she wasn't able to turn back. So she understood that feeling too well. If Soich could go back to that day, then he might even sell his soul to the devil. That was why Soichi wiped his tears and took the girl's hand. He wrapped his hands around her tiny hand. girl smiled with relief and happiness. She smiled like a child who'd finally found the treasure. And then, as she continued smiling, she never moved again. Once he saw the girl pass away, so she felt all the tension within him um, unravel at once. Just then, his, the wound on his neck hurt greater than before. And his consciousness started fading from the blood loss. Soichi almost fell to the ground, but managed to keep himself up by using both of his hands. The bleeding from his neck fell to the um, fell loudly to the floor. When he saw that, Soichi realized just how deep the wound on his neck was. Soichi. 
Rika knows what was up with Soichi. She gently laid the girl's body down, wiped her hands. Oh no, uh, she, um, Jane. No, sorry, um. Jane laid the girl down and forgot to wipe her own tears as she hastily embraced Soichi. Well, that's such a, you're wounded so badly. Um, Reika, um, lay Soichi up against the wall. Since he was bleeding out of his neck, she couldn't let him lie on the floor. I let him lie down. Sorry, I can't see it myself, though. So she's face, um, scrunched from the pain as he gave Reka a smile. Baka. You idiot! But Reka was in no state of mind to be smiling herself. The collar got in the way. And then, just as Reika grabbed at his collar to get a better look at the wounds. Uh -huh. huh? Soichi's collar broke into two pieces and fell um, on top of his body. It was the collar that had taken the brunt of the girl's gunshot. R Reika? Soichi? Soichi, your collar. Reika picked up a part of the bloodstained collar and held down from Soichi. It, it came off? Soichi endured the pa pain as he stared at it dumbfoundedly. The collar that brought us all that suffering came off that easily? But now's not the time to rejoice. Reika quickly threw away the piece of the collar. You got off the collar, but it won't mean anything if you're this badly injured. Reika moved, pushed off all the pieces of the collar and then took, took out a towel from her bag and pushed it against um, his wound to try to stop the bleeding. I see. So the collar was that easy to get off, was it? Pretty bad wound. No, it's, um. Okay, never mind. I see. It's a pretty bad wound, huh? Must have been if it got the collar off. Soichi limply leaned against the wall. Thanks to the since it his collar had been hit, Soichi avoided um a fatal injury. A fatal wound. But his neck was still badly injured. The reason why Soichi and Reika hadn't tried to take off the collars in the first place was they were afraid of something like this happened. Since they thought that, um, since they thought that trying to remove the collar might break their necks or give them a bad injury, um, no one tried to defy the rules. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm lucky or unlucky. <laughs> I 
指輪は外れてもお前が死んだら外れたって意味ないじゃないの Unlucky, obviously. Getting it off layer, we better in this in this violent way of removing it. If you die even after removing your collar, then there's no then there's no point in removing it in the first place. Reka moved her hands. She cried. She was occupied and with um, with, um, grabbing the first aid kit and attending to Soichi's wound. Won't stop bleeding. Please stop. Let's say, pulled through pretty well myself there. <laughs> It didn't go as well as when the movie or something. But even an amateur like me pulled this off. Isn't... Just think of it like that, Reika. No, don't you think so too, Reika? They couldn't save the girl. And he'd suffer the grave wound. But he had the sense that he'd done everything he could. If this were a movie or a manga, the hero probably could have done a much better job. They would have protected their his allies, saved the girl, and would have led everyone to a big happy ending. But this was reality. It, things didn't go that easily. Bullets had flown left to and fro without mercy and people had died as though it were nothing. I'd say it did pretty well for a mere ping pong club member though. If this were an action movie, the ping pong member wouldn't even make it to the wouldn't even make it to the climax. It's fine. Stop. This isn't the time to be just trying to wrap everything up in a nice bow. There's still much you have left to do. Like what? Waking me up every morning and telling me you love me, complaining about my terrible cooking, and and going along with me reluctantly wherever I go want, no matter what. There's tons of places I want to go with you, like the beach, the mountains, shopping. Well, that's a pickle. I'll watch you study too. I'll help you get into this. I'll help you get into the whatever college you want to get into. So open your eyes, Soichi. It's still too early to end this. <laughs> I guess maybe I'll try going for your college then. Our standards are really high. You're gonna have to study your ass off once you get back. I'll be fine. I'm used to harsh things being harsh and strict. That's the way things always were for me, after all. He's been pushed around ever since he was a kid. By, by, by a certain someone ever since he was a kid. I 
Whenever he tried cutting corners or lying, she'd always get angry at him. Reiko would probably be the same way from now on as well. When he thought that, Soichi began to... Um, oddly enough, he felt like he was looking forward to the days that would come for the first time in a while. And I'll keep on struggling. Looks like he'll be helpless without me after all. That's right. I'm a coward, spoiled, and, and I'm not very trusting. So you have to watch out for me to make sure I don't give in to my to my insecurities. Hold on a second, you two. And then, later because Rega's wish had been granted, where Soichi had regained his willpower, or where the, um... where the medicine to stop the bleeding was effective. Either way, the the the, the many different um, cloths that she uh, Reika had used to press against Soichi's wound were stained red. You're so selfish, Reika. I won't die that easy. As if I'd let you get away, run away through death anyway. Reika regained some of her cheer once the bleeding started to go down. She finally started to wipe her tears. One second. Be right back. And you're tenacious, too. I'm also a real jealous kind. Well, I'm an idiot, so that puts me at ease, actually. Then let yourself be at ease. I'll wrap you up like a spider. Case, the wicked woman act doesn't really work. Soichi laughed a little on the inside. Alright, I'm gonna wrap the bandage now. Be a good boy and hold still, Soichi. She finally finished wiping her tears and began um, treating Soichi again. Though Reika had finished wrapping Soichi's bandages, they didn't have any special medical tools with them, so first aid treatment was all she could manage. The bleeding had slowed down thanks to Reika's treatment, but it was still bleeding out little by little. Ten more hours, huh? The fifth floor had just turned into a forbidden area. Soichi and Reika had been quite surprised when all eight PDAs they had beeped all up at that time. It's too long. Reika bit her lip. 
Soichi lasts this long? Can he survive for 10 hours without um, proper treatment? Rekub was panicking. Look, Soichi had stabilized. Couldn't, he hadn't taken a turn for the better either. Since he was still bleeding, that meant his symptoms were actually getting worse. The one sa saving grace to them was that the last remaining participant aside from them was in a far had gone to a far away non combat area and stayed was staying in there. They found that out through the girl, Karen Hojo's PDA. That person had probably fulfilled their condition and stopped because of it. Reiko was almost um, tearfully grateful to that since Soichi couldn't move well right now. Reiko. What is it, Soichi? Do your wounds hurt? Sorry, um, here I go. Reika immediately reacted to Soichi's voice and looked at him. I'm okay, so don't make that face. You're not injured after all. I'm making this face because you're injured. If I were injured just as much, I wouldn't be making this face. Reika took Soichi's left hand and gripped it tightly. When she looked at him again, she realized that Soichi was covered in wounds all over. It wasn't just his neck. His left arm had a bandage on it, too. It was the one she'd wrapped around him yesterday. It also had some other small scratches he here and there. Gone them all over the last few days and from taking Reika at that. Go this far for someone else. So I got. So, hold on a second. He's all I got. So please, God, please, please don't take Soichi away from me. Reika's tears fell on their, um, connected hands and shattered on impact. Soichi quietly watched that for a while. Eventually he looked up and looked at, stared, um, Reika in the face. Reika. Let's remove your collar. Huh? Soichi looked back at... at um, Reika looked back at Soichi with tears in her eyes. The last person isn't moving, right? And bes so that means there won't be anyone else who will try to destroy our PDAs. Reika's PDA was the 8. They had seven PDAs. Hazuki and Nagisa were the four and the jack. And the girl had, um, had been holding on to the two, three, six, seven, and king. The 
the remaining PDAs aside from that didn't involve requiring other PDAs. They didn't know what the PDA of the last person in the non-combat area was. But they shouldn't be. But they shouldn't. They shouldn't mind if they destroyed the PDAs here. I want to see what you look like without the collar. Yeah. But. I might not make it ten hours, so I want to see it. I want to see what you look like without that ridiculous collar on. Soichi, if the Joker is one of these, then. Reika looked at the PDAs lying strewn about nearby. She had to destroy five of the seven PDAs. If the Joker was one of them, then her collar would activate. She didn't want that, so Ray had been putting off destroying the um, removing her collar. If she could, she would wait until the last minute. That was what she thought. When the time comes, can you do it on your own? So, so it... Reika fell silent when she imagined when she um, imagined the meaning of those words. Don't jinx it. Reika didn't even want to consider it. She didn't want to think of Soichi being dead when she removed the collar. I can do it. And you'll still be alive then. So you can see me without a collar all we want, even if it's not now. Reika. So don't say that, Soichi. But I want to see it right now, Reika. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry, here we go. It was Soichi's body. He knew better than anyone that it was wishful thinking. Reiko was well aware of that too. She just didn't want to accept it. I can be with you right now. Even if you, even if you fail, I'll be with you, so it's fine. Isn't that her promise, Reika? They'd be together in life or death. Reika once made Soichi promise that. In that case, I meant Reiko's at risk as well. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, back. So let's do while we can still keep our promise. Like, while I can still keep my promise. 
All right, Soichi. We'll do it your way. Reika nodded. But which one should we destroy, Soichi? Calm down, Reika. You'll be fine. You say that, but I can't keep my thoughts straight at this point. All right, Soiji was all Reiku could think about right now. Even when she tried to think of something else, her mind would meet. Would, she would quickly switch back to the dying Soiji, and then she would lose all focus immediately. It's all right. First, I think Hazuki and Nagisa's PDAs are all right. I don't think those two would have lied or tricked us. L lied to or tricked us. Hazuki and Nagisa had died protecting the two of them. So she didn't believe that either of them had the Joker. Okay, then let's go for these two first. Reika took the four and the jack PDAs out from the seven and put them a little distance away. Also, that girl, Karin Hojo, was gathering PDAs. So I think her PDA is the king. They learned from her student ID that her name was Karin Hojo. She'd had five PDAs in total. One of them had to be hers, so it left four. Couldn't think of any other condition other than uh, Reikas and the Kings that would require gathering those PDAs. Yes, you're right. Reika put the King next to the Jack. This made three PDAs and they were safe to destroy. The remaining ones were the 2, 3, 6, and 7. They had to pick two more from those four. So this is where the real problem begins, huh? There was a 50% chance the Joker was one of those. I was mixed in with those. If they selected randomly, there was a 50% chance they'd win. There was also a chance that the Joker wasn't with them either. So that left, um, Reika's, if that left Reika's chance of survival higher than 50%. But I can't gamble with Reika's life. Soichi wants a 100% guarantee they can remove Reika's collar. Is there anything we can use? Any hints? Soichi glared at the other four PDAs. Reika looked at Soichi like a child about to cry. Reika, you think too. Are we overlooking something? Or should we have Rake get in touch with that final person after all? If that person removed their collar, that, met, that left one extra PDA they could safely destroy, but... But even so, even if that were the case, they would need one more anyway. Yeah. When Rake no nods, Soichi almost blacked out for a second. It was only for a moment. The 
the, the pain that throbbed in his neck kept him awake. This is looking bad. No, hold on a second. Okay, continuing now. This is looking kind of bad. Though he was still conscious. Um. His. So he just had felt like it was in a daze. So he's. Are you alright? Rika went over to Soichi as she, when she picked up on. This condition. I'm alright. So let's hurry up and remove your collar, Reika. But I can't do it, Soichi. I'm too scared to make a decision. Reika shook her head with a pale face. Soichi could tell just how anxious she felt. Your life is on the line. It's only natural to be scared. I'm scared too. Scared of myself dying and of you dying. But I know you can do this. My Reika, who's... My Reika, beautiful and cool, can do this. But without you, I... We realized that Reika couldn't easily um, wash away her own anxiety. So she leaned against her. Alright, Reika. Take a deep breath. So she then made the same joke as before. But Reika didn't laugh. Soichi breathed deeply into her ear again. I know, Reika. But forget how to breathe without me. Isn't that what you said? Of course, that's only obvious. So think. Let me do the breathing. I know you. You. I know you can come. I know the the normal you. You could. You can come up with a, with a great idea. 